here we are with another amazing speaker. Well, you already know who I am. I'm Dr. Stephanie Wall, your tower of power, your transformation architect. So who do we have here with us now? Ah, got Jay Allison with you right now, Dr. Stephanie. Jay Allison. All right, D Jay Allison, tell the people, I like to call them the people, tell <laughs> them, how do you transform the world? With my heart. Things that come directly from my heart are things that God has told me to share and do, and I am a willing participant, and I do them. I That's love what that. I do. I love that. Well, you kind of answered the other question, but I want to ask it anyway. Why that method? Why do you transform the world using that functionality? Believe it or not, I can't figure out how not to. Every time I do something not in line with what my heart tells me to do, I pay a price. Something happens that is negative and long lasting. So I don't do it. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm today and twice on Sundays, I like to say. But let me ask you this. What one word sums up your purpose? What one word sums up your purpose? I would love to say it's heartfelt, um, but I would even go deeper and say love. Y'all know love is the answer, right? Love is the answer. I love that so much, Jay. All right, you all, you have heard it here. And I know you don't want to hear from Dr. Stephanie. You don't want to hear from the two of us chatting. No, no, no. You want to get down to the meat and potatoes and hear what Jay Ellison has to say. So I want you to stay tuned because the next voice that you'll hear won't be mine. It'll be Jay's. And you know it's going to be what? GC. All right, see y'all shortly. Ooh. Well, hello, Dr. Stephanie. Hi. It is amazing to be here and share your platform, One Million Lives Transformed. I get to be included and share my transformative life's truth, I am over the moon. It is really my time to do this. And you are correct. And thank you for guiding me through how to put together this workshop. Now, I have to be completely truthful with you. You already know that I'm a dancer. And um, for me to stay on point and not just keep going and going and going, I'm going to read straight through my script for you so if i'm not staring directly at you that's the only reason why please i take it from my heart i absolutely mean every word that i'm saying to you i love you and thank you for tuning in now the title of my presentation is how dancing can transform your life's decisions and i am a dancer so of course <laughs> i'm going to take it from there this is how the discipline of dancing transformed my life. Dance studies are grounded in shifting your decision-making processes to elevate, not devastate your world. Safety is a primary factor in technique. It's why it exists. It is the means to reach maximum potential within each body that gets this education. And as an educator, of this craft, I get to pinpoint where my students get stuck thinking between movements. You know, sometimes it's a quick fix, like run the step two to five times. You know, uh, should normally do the trick. But if it doesn't, I have to dig into their intellect and figure out where their thinking is taking them. You have to get to the root of the issue. Then we move that issue forward to conquer it. Such as uh, my example of doing a pirouette. Now a pirouette is a turn that one leg is up making like a number four. The toe is at the opposite knee and you're standing on one leg and you're turning around. Um, yeah. Well, let me tell you, I had problems doing a basic balance on one leg. So uh, this turning stuff, it was awful for me. And I was not successful until I gained balance control through the methodology of spotting. 
Ha ha. Now, spotting is when you transfix on a point. So you're looking at, let's say, a door. Um, even better, the latch on the door. You focus on that latch and you do not turn away from it. When you get far enough away, boom. You transfix on it again and you continue to bring your body around. That way you never lose focus and it helps you remain upright and not going crooked. That is spotting. Now let me back up to my issue of balance. All right, now with balance, you have to make sure that you have this foundation secured. First, I learned the body alignment and the muscles that you use to lift and you rotate from the thighs and through the belly and the torso. And of course, the neck and the head follows suit. Now to just memorize what it took to feel these muscles and to get over the fear of failure before I blew it again. I did it by comparing my ignorance on this matter to this newly acquired information. And I understood it is the real way to accomplish this standing feat. So I took a deep breath and I went for it. Still not coordinated enough. It took more practice shots to get that I needed to understand that my mind was not clear. You have to have a clear mind of all of your past pains of your failures. And do that before you take your next cleansing breath and go for it again. Well, hot dang if that did not work out perfectly. Bingo. Now to practice doing it repetitively. So making that decision becomes the habit to keep. Turns out that positive thinking begins with quietness of the mind and that takes daily practice and it's awesomely good to know you have control over it isn't it this is growth and the determination to fix internal problems that affect physical outcomes that i must live with for the rest of my life i know this as a dancer you are building from the ground up it dawned on me then that this is life's game who knew there were rules? Now I'm 14 years old and I'm learning this. There are rules. Now I have learned <laughs> and I apply this method to my life. It grows dynamically as I grow and evolve. The lesson of accepting that I reject intelligence when I feel confronted by it, the cloudy mindset that it causes, that is the fight. Anytime you find yourself in that cloud, this is when you know, oh, you have to stop and calm your mind and start over from the beginning. Human compassion and empathy, abandonment and fearfulness, these are all learned expressions and are powerful tools that imprint from our foundations. This forms our responsive attitudes and natural urges that drive personality development to replicate and mimic environmental norms. This is my assertion through 40 years of experience. And as such, our bodies are responsible for the good, better, and best gestures, just as much as it is for the bad, deeper, worst ones. Dance is a mirror of society and cultures. Dance insists on gaining control over every facet of the human body so it may demonstrate a reasonable mold or character that every person recognizes. The more reflective its presentation, the more vulnerable and effective the mind has become to process even the emotions linked to the character or the environment that we're here to show. And here is an example. Well, okay, two examples. They are my former dance students and I poached their stories from their public posts on social media. Now I trained, these are grown women now, everyone's in their thirties. I trained these ladies from ages nine to 18. So I had them for half of their lives at this point. 
uh, and they're grown people. Now, this is what they have to say. I'm going to share these stories because they tie in excellently to this point. Happy Atheist Day. As an ex-Christian, it is obviously a huge part of my life, my process of deconverting. You can always ask me anything. But growing up, thinking atheists lacked morals or were just selfish, narcissistic people who wanted to sin, I think the day is important. There is endless pro-religious propaganda and influence everywhere in the world. It might seem strange to celebrate a non-belief, but atheists are human too, and not God-hating heathens. I don't hate God, I just don't believe he exists. Hashtag Atheist Day, hashtag secularism, hashtag separation of church and state. Moving on to the second story. Yeah, please keep taking note here. This one's a slightly bit longer. So, Scarlet, so, okay, sorry. <laughs> so the last couple of days, Scarlet has been collecting rocks from the stable to sell. We only sold, uh, told a couple close people and my dad ended up buying one yesterday. Today, I almost forgot about the rocks. Then when we were about to get out of the car and go inside Wawa, the lady parked beside us smiles and waves at Scarlet and Scarlet says, she looks like a nice lady. Maybe she would like to buy a rock. I can take my rocks in Wawa to see if anyone wants to buy one. I say something along the lines of, we're not going to ask her. And I probably have a little laugh, head shake, and, you know, an eye roll or something like that to myself. Anyway, we went to Wawa. And I'm a little annoyed that she really brought her cup of rocks in. She's shaking them and singing, rocks for sale, rocks for sale. Our lowest price is $4. The lady we saw outside tells me it's cute and reminds her of how her daughter used to collect rocks. Some people just look and a couple smiled. I laugh a little to myself as I make my coffee and she starts telling a familiar employee she's selling rocks. A man hears this and says he'd like to buy one. He pulls out $10 and gives it to her for a dusty rock. She didn't even give him one of the rocks that I consider to be nicer, but he was satisfied and so was she. She was so happy. I was a little surprised. If I made her keep the rocks in the car like I started, she wouldn't have made $10. My daughter had an idea to make money and she believed in it. And someone put, supported it. I was proud of her and happy for her when she made the $10. But honestly, I wasn't very supportive beforehand and I felt bad about that. That was a lesson for me. I have to try to be more supportive, whether she is successful or not. I don't ever wanna break her spirit or discourage her from following her heart, chasing her dreams, and believing in her abilities, if it brings her happiness. I hope it was also a lesson for her that she should always believe in herself and her abilities, whether those closest to her believe in or encourage her or not. Morals of the story. Number one, believe in yourself. Number two, encourage your children. Number three, don't be the one to hold your children back. Number four, if you believe in it, Pursue it with or without the support of those around you. And if anyone is interested, my daughter has rocks for sale. <laughs> I am very, very proud of these two former students. I know the guidance that was provided for their growth with objectivity versus the status quo in their decision-making processes through the self-discipline of dance. It both opens and narrows the focus as a training tool for not only your muscle memory to activate, but it activates your heart and mind decision-making going forward. They are proving my philosophies around dance and humanity have impressive merits. I'm going to translate that guidance I know I gave to them to you now, but you won't have to sweat.
Okay, here's the exercise. You're pretty much going to mimic what they did without making a post though. Write about your recent opportunity to encourage yourself or another person. Reflect and respond to how it went, how you felt about it. How do you feel about it now? Are you happy with your stream of thought? What attitude adjustment can make a difference? Do you want an attitude adjustment? Assess, then record your answer. This is not a test, so there are no restrictions. Just go ahead and do you. <laughs> and while you're doing you, I'm going to move on to point number two, which is, do you want an attitude adjustment? Mm-hmm. It is rather painful. It is one of the most painful things you'll ever do. Pain is an unrelenting part of changing a habit. Are you ready for it? There is no easy way or shortcut. This is the most difficult part. You know that saying about not for the faint of heart or the one about the grandson, the Indian, uh, the American Indian grandson and grandfather. And he asked the question, I've got these two wolves. One is angry, one is fair. And which do I feed? And the grandfather simply tells him the one you want to grow. Oh, I love these things. Well, I got to tell you, a portion of this healing journey is like the worst. It is so like the worst, like I don't even want to speak about it. And that is the big rub that gets people stuck for progressing at a speed satisfying enough to please them. Patience is the key. And who has the time for patience when everything is around you all the time, all at once, just happening? Well, let's look at this a little bit more. Emotional, then physical pain and its effect on our, well, everything, our, our well-being, our, our self-love, our self-soothing, everything that does progress us forward. I know I should quote some wonderful studies here, and I want to. I have simply chosen to talk from personal experience to support the outcomes of which I speak. And um, I'll start with relating to the beginning of my training with that pirouette. Okay, that was an issue because honestly, I lived in constant pain of five and six days a week of stretching, lifting, holding up a leg in the perfect shape to strengthen it and elongate the lines of the body. I recall very clearly not wanting to go to school for at least one day. And so I rolled over and I forgot about the clock. Six months into training and I was crying from the pain of walking, standing and sitting after school. So whenever my body relaxed, it returned to a familiar state of calm. I wanted more of that. My father caught on that I was not embracing the morning routine and came into my room to see about me. I told him what I told you. And he, a former long distance runner, had the nerve to say to me, uh, the only way you're going to get better is if you get up and do it again. Now, come on. And I remember my eyes welling up and I crawled out of bed and I crawled to the bathroom on the floor because my body ached when I moved. He was right, and I knew it deep inside, at least. <laughs> Being strong enough to live through the daily pain became the goal. Eat enough, slept barely enough, keep a stoic face so I won't show the pain on the outside. And one day without warning, I realized I was not in pain any longer. And I do not remember when that constant pain stopped, two years straight. I also believe age 14 turned out to be a blessing to learn what patience and tolerance for the uncomfortable is all about. The steps that I took are these. One, accepted how worn out I was. Two, accept that I woke up and have a choice to give in to yesterday's issues that haunted me or 
do it again because my goal means something in my heart. Number three, patience and tolerance. Okay, you're going to have to settle in, put on your seatbelt and buckle in because your inner strength is about to be tested for a couple years. Number four, this is what it feels like in between worlds of desired outcomes. Your free will, okay, <clears throat> my free will is being exercised. I like that word. You can feed the wolf if you want to get stronger. And I'm keeping that advice. If you can survive this, this is number five. If I can survive this, my positive choices will come to pass. And this brings me to my closing topic. The cause and effects of our decisions are lifelong. Here's a little story for you, or a big story. From 1993 to 1995, I ushered hip hop dance to the concert dance stage, opening the door for everyone to learn it formally around the world. Here's a short version. This here tenacious dance lady wanted to be able to learn street dance authentically from her friends in a real studio, like every other dance and rehearsal I've ever been in, being that I am a professional dancer and am a co-owner of a professional company for like 13 years at this point. It was not possible, so I made a way. It happened undercover. I snuck it in and I forced it to occur. You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> All right, every issue, every celebration is a direct result of every personal decision leading up to that day in your history, in your life. Believe it or not, there was a time when street shoes and especially sneakers were never permitted on a proper dance floor. It's still that way. You have to have special ones to get onto the dance floor. I asked my versatile tap dance class, and these are kids that I have right now. And uh, I asked them what they knew about the hip hop they take. You know, what's their history? What history do they know? I wanted to know. Uh, I told them the prior statement, you know, what I told you. And they pondered it. And I told them to ask their parents. You know, some of their parents are professional dancers. They were around. They know the, They know when hip hop made its way into the dance studio. Uh, you know, but ask them when you get home. Now, they told me they had no concept of life without hip hop. However, they are alpha students and pretty genius, if you ask me. And uh, when I opened up the their thinking of old hip hop movies, they got the picture of outside old school with the cardboard and the safe the cardboard so they can have a safe head and body spins. And uh, now they understood the street shoe rule because they had to live by it the entire time, special ones for the studio only. So I continue. As a dancer, what constitutes making it on stage and especially a ballet stage? They considered their reasons competition reasons, Radio City Music Hall reasons, and concluded you had to really be special and really, really clean with your dancing. These are good guesses, but there are theater rules which are stricter than common theater spaces like schools, colleges, recreation centers, and you know, some private facilities. But at, at any rate, ballet and concert stage performances that you witness only happen because someone ushered that group to the door. You get nowhere in this field without an invitation. Nowhere, an introduction. You must be introduced. My dance company from high school, Leja Dance Theater, was ushered in the door by our modern dance teacher. She taught Horton, okay? Horton Modern Dance. When, okay, all right, let me back this up. So Leja Dance Theater, ushered in our modern dance teacher from high school 
professional Horton technique and more. She's awesome. Now, it, this happened in the late fall of 1982. She brought us out into the professional world with other professional modern dance companies sharing the same stage. That is how it is done. Now, when I got the opportunity to bridge and invite my street dance impresario friend, Rennie Harris, into the ballet world, you think I was going to pass that up? Because Leja's choreographer, one of them, Melvin Purnell, he longed to create an African ballet featuring Dunham dance and ballet technique and needed a leading male dancer to play the role of Shango, King of Oyo. He's ascending to be a god shortly. I knew it was the opening that I needed to get him into the studio. I was so happy. It worked. Who's going to turn down a role of being a king that gets to ascend to a god and dance along with a hot dance partner? Just say it. Okay, anyway. So I knew that uh, we were going to make history here. I did get him into the studio for a few months. Rennie had to go through what we all go through. Welcome to our world. He had private lessons to partner with me, with the choreographer, Melvin Purnell, who told him he had to shave his body before we had our costume fittings and, you know, theater stuff came into play and you have to do all of the hoo-hoo-wahas to get yourself ready to present on this stage professionally. Now, you can imagine that Rennie's reaction to this was really delightful. <laughs> he accepted this mission with utter delight. Seriously, it was wonderful. And honestly, who wouldn't? Anyway, it was a success. We toured for the rest of the season into the fall with that work, Shango and Oshun. Oh, um, Rennie's dance company member, Cricket, he had to understudy Leon's part, um, um, a leg buff. Leon, uh, Leon Evans J. Allison Dance Theater is the name of the company. Uh, Leon played the part of a leg buff. Rennie, Shango, me, Oshun, goddess Oshun. <laughs> now, um, Cricket had to understudy for Leon and was able to do this performance as the trickster god for one of our matinee shows. Super successful run. Now, um, the following spring season, not the skipping winter. It was our 15th anniversary. Leja is officially celebrating 15 years. And uh, we extended to Rennie Harris an invitation to bring his entire company, my suggestion, uh, to break in the scene with our overflowing audiences. He accepted and brought Concrete Jungle to open the second half of our home season stellar concert. Yay! The applause was thunderous to the point of the police coming to the theater to find out what on earth this audience was doing, making noise as though they were outside at an epic arena, stomping, clapping, yelling, hooping. It was amazing. Boom. Let's just drop that mic, shall we? My thinking was correct. And that is a worthy side note. <laughs> My partner, Leon, somehow lost our money to pay them for the three-show work that they did. So by that Christmas time, mm -hmm, Christmas, Rennie gave us a gift of forgiveness and let it go. I was completely ashamed of this. And probably it is the main reason that God needed time to prepare me to let that ish go. And today I get to speak my truth and am enjoying it. 
basically because I noticed the timing that uh, the 50 year celebration of hip hop is happening. And I feel a part of it because I am a major part of that movement from the outside, except nobody knows it, except for people here locally in Philadelphia. You can ask any of the dance people here that were around back in those days. They were here for it. Everybody knows Leisha. Well, once that stage door opened for them and they became able to perform on a ballet stage, they did other collaborations with other people. It opened the door for acceptance and trust between street and concert dance, which led to its admission into dancing schools. And honestly, around that time, uh, the schools were not peaking and the students at that time, they wanted to learn stuff that's happening out on the street and they would go to a recreation center instead of to a dancing school. Hip hop revitalized the dance school elements for serving all constituents. Again, I say, you're welcome. <laughs> By the way, I am also responsible for that death drop that everyone does. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say partially responsible. Leja, 1983 to 1986. Leja performed its modern jet dance, liturgical stuff in after hours nightclubs. You know, clubs that don't open up until two in the morning. Uh, the catacombs was where we normally had the floor show uh, at like three in the morning. Um, and uh, the Horton Hook, remember our teacher who, yeah, ushered us in? Mm -hmm. That is the name of the step that we would do and people copied us. It was gorgeous to look at. Now they didn't have any technique, so they came up with their own hack for this movement. And it works. Bam. God bless them. Again, you are welcome. <laughs> now, of course, that choreography was both mine and Leon Evans's. And um, I just gotta say, it has, uh, it's on my YouTube channels. You can check it out and, you know, ask anyone around that time what dates they have versus the dates that I have up and you should be able to see a progression going on there. Now, um, it was my rebellious nature that kept me motivated as long as what I am doing is fun. I win whether I win or lose. I will still get there. And that is my truth. Now, I have one thing for you to do. List 10 unique things about you. I can share my list with you. I'll read this rather quickly. Number one. This is an old list. I don't even know when I typed this thing out. Honestly, it's been years. I am a dancer who trains people for a living in the vernaculars of Chiquetti and American ballet techniques. Jazz styles of Jojo Smith and Leja, my own. Modern techniques of Horton, Graham, and Anthony. A dash of African technique of Dunham. Contemporary modern jazz improvisation. Tap dance, traditional Broadway and hoofing, and praise dance liturgical. And I'm very good in all these styles. My favorite is tap, but I am best in modern. I mentor young women now but have developed the careers of no less than 60 dancers to national and international levels. Number three, my choreography is a staple for two well-known local dance companies with national reputations. Number four, redeveloped and established the five county regions only tap festival. There may be 16 in the country. Number five, I have the body of a goddess, a la Pam Greer. <laughs> Number six, I run two dance companies and choreograph for a third. Number seven, understand that the more I know, the more I don't know. Number eight, I am reliable, a woman of my word. Number nine, have the keys to a potential powerhouse structure like a Debbie Allen, four or five county region and broader. And number 10, a personality, a persona that is unique with star stage quality presence. 
Now, when you look at your list, you will really appreciate how more than interesting, but actually distinguished you are. Now, in conclusion, I want to say thank you intensely for making it to the final phase of my first online workshop. It's basically on dance appreciation and how dance really is a part of your life. It's a part of us in our hearts. It's part of our existence. And I have to extend to you that knowledge through my products. Now, let me share. Hold on. One, two, three. I'm back. My product line, it is extensive and it reflects everything that I just talked about. Everything. The history, the ballet, the hip hop, the generational stuff. And you can find it on redbubble.com. J. Allison, Jada. Redbubble.com, J. Allison, Jada. Everything you need. If you cannot wear the apparel, there you can decorate your house. You can have your pet eat out of a, a dance dish bowl. <laughs> there are so many things. Also, I've written three books. So I'll start from the top. Book number one, Chronicles of Carols in Color, the storybook. This is the one that has that little story in it about, and here you can see it. This is the page where I actually have our poster from the 15th anniversary concert. Rennie Harris group is on here, Pure Movement. It's wonderful. My second book, Her Chronicles Continues. Open Letter to You, The Storybook, Volume 2. This mentions more about the death drop and about how children develop in dance. Well, develop as artists. Kind of like the Scarlet story, you needed to have some support. She needed to have some support. But she made it anyway. No one encouraged her. She did it by herself. And finally... I had to reboot the first book, Chronicles of Carols in Color, the deluxe edition, because there were things that I forgot, such as, well, I didn't forget it. The production company wasn't able to make it virtual for me. So this one was, and I have included really yummy extras where you get to have like Christmas cards that you can cut out for the holiday season. And my favorite addition to this is you can virtually see the entire show of Carols and Color through the QR code. You can find these books on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, you know, the normal places. I am not wearing any of my fashions right now. Uh, I feel like I should have, but I did not. I want to thank you for believing in One Million Lives Transformed Enough that you are tuning into my workshop. Now, I don't know what else to say. So I'll just repeat that. If anyone purchases from the Red Bottle product, Red Bubble product line, it will most likely be you. I believe my God-given gift in dance and ministry for all people to connect through the ministry of feeling the heart. And these products reflect it. It's an extensive line celebrating the years of dance, arts, training, hip-hop, teaching, just all the history that we talked about. You can get items like laptop and phone cases, pillows, pet stuff, bathroom decor, variations on clothes and just items and it's suitable for every person on the planet there are just so many dance statements that you can make with these products and show your pride in dance history and black history and women history pride in what we develop and move and, and pass on forward 
By the way, I said Jada, didn't I? J. Allison Jada. Jada is my fourth name change in four decades. Change was a decision and it works for me. I pray all of this works for you as well. Dr. Stephanie, you have been a blessing. I hope I didn't ramble too much there at the end, but I really wanted you to know all about those products as well. So please support, please buy, uh, help a sister maintain her essence. <laughs> uh, and I'm throwing it right back at you, Miss Stephanie. Have a really, really wonderful rest of this conference. <laughs>